The origin stories of the Hopi contain similarities that reach deep within the beliefs of every nationality on the face of this planet. They speak of four different cataclysms that almost destroyed all life on Earth. In the beginning of what they call the Four Creations, they explain how our planet began. When placed side by side with the creation story in Genesis, they echo one another. This world had no time, no shape, and no life, except in the mind of the Creator. Then the Creator instructed him to gather together the waters from the endless space and place them on these worlds to make land and sea. When Sotunang had done that, the Creator instructed him to gather together air to make winds and breezes on these worlds. Singing the creation song, she made four men, and then in her own form, made four women. These people spread across the earth and multiplied. Despite their four languages, in those days they could understand each other's thoughts. They end up losing belief in their creator by giving too much of their attention to society. It ends with all land on earth burning, while those who were saved take refuge in a sanctuary created to survive the cataclysm. But why are two distinct belief systems, which were on opposite sides of the ocean thousands of years ago, passing down what is essentially the same story? There are beliefs from other cultures that also mirror the same set of events, but for this video we'll keep it down to these two. The people within the refuge lived underground, learning from those who had taken them in until the earth had cooled enough for them to emerge. When they had climbed out of their sanctuary, they had perceived their previous world as a paradise, and believed that due to the sins of their fellow people, they were unable to ever go back. In this new world they began to multiply, but their desire for commodities grew until they traded for things they did not need and forgot the rules of their creator. Once again, people were warned of an oncoming cataclysm, and those who were worthy were gathered and hidden underground. The Hopi description for the next cataclysm is as follows. This time he ordered two of the gods to abandon their posts at the Earth's poles, and soon the world spun out of control and rolled over. Mountains slid and fell, and lakes and rivers splashed across the land as the earth tumbled, and finally the earth froze over into nothing but ice. They remained underground for many generations, until the two gods went back to their poles. The ice melted, and the people could finally walk upon the earth where they were told to multiply yet again. This second world is similar to the story of Adam and Eve who also lived in a paradise they could not return to because of their sins. They learned from their hosts, and when coming into a new world which was vastly different than the one they had left, were told to populate. In the Hopi's telling, the third world was the last world before the one we live in today, and this one reflects the flood story. As they did so, they multiplied quickly, even more quickly than before, and soon they were living in large cities and developing into separate nations. He called on one of the gods to gather those few along the shore. She placed each person with a little food in the hollow stem of a reed. When she had done this, the Creator let loose a flood that destroyed the warring cities and the world on which they lived. They floated on the water for many days looking for land, until they finally drifted to an island. Each story after creation begins knowing of a previous world which was regarded as a paradise. They all talk about being warned by those with knowledge of an oncoming cataclysm. They are promised protection as long as the rules and beliefs are followed. Those who didn't want to abide were left behind to be wiped out. Those who were saved were taught in the ways of their saviors. 
and when the wait for the world to cleanse itself was over, they emerged and were told to multiply the earth again, and not to stray from the laws of their creator. Each time they walked the land of a planet they no longer recognized. Not only are the connections of this Hopi legend akin to some of the texts in the Bible, they take on a rather interesting perspective when you try to imagine if these events were to take place today. In fact, if you take a closer look, the laws surrounding many of these stories read as a survival manual, rules and regulations put into place to save the species and prevent extinction. If we were to find out today that some earth-changing event is about to happen, perhaps scientists discover the plates are going to separate, or a meteor that we can't stop is about to collide. These legends from the Hopi and stories from religion parallel everything we would do from preparation to settlement to emergence. Eventually what life used to be, our technologies and livelihoods, would permeate through the lineages and stories until our descendants arrive to be no different than the people we are today. A world which has been separated, but connected through tales.